Welcome back, you beautiful nerds. I am Wildfire One, and we are getting ready to play our third installment of Yelled Mermaid Hunters. Where I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our GM. Thank you, Wildfire. Clovis Ty here, your GM. Sorry it's been a while. I had surgery, and then some more surgery, and then some extra sides of surgery. My advice, if you're over 30, get a CAT scan. You might think you're okay, but you won't know what problems are forming until they become quite the bitch. Get a CAT scan. Dilly dilly. Anyways, with us today, we have Grizzly Mikey. McBee. What's up, y'all? The nine-year-old know-it-all. Whoop whoop. He made it through our most recent battle with the mermaids without taking any damage, except for perhaps the emotional damage of losing his dog, Dave. Dave, Dave was exploded here. into a ghost. Dave's not with, with us anymore. What Poor Dave. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> I'm out of school, 960. And injured but still kicking is Millie the Tomboy, a girl of 11 years. What's she up, most guys? recently acquired a fishing pole from one of the mermaids. Hello. Monster 74, guys. Well, as mentioned, they had a vicious battle of two mermaids, one of whom specialized in drowning motherfuckers. It's kind of how Dave the dog met his demise, to be honest. And now it's starting to get really late outside, but off in the distance, they can see some lights. Millie, I don't lights. like the dark. I don't like the dark. Let's go, to, let's go to the light. All right. Follow me. And so, rather than turning to the camp where the fairies live, whom are the big, fluffy bear things, they go towards the nearby lights. As the group approaches the lights, they see a rather depressed and bored-looking shopkeep near the tavern. Hey, we should visit that, Mikey. We should totally visit that shop. Maybe there'll be, like, I don't know something to bring Dave back, or maybe they have, like, lizards or something. Let's walk to it now. So we walk up to the shopkeeper. The man takes a nice long pull on his cup of coffee and looks at you. Oh, what do you want? We'd, li we'd like to see where's my good sir. His eyes, okay. We've got a variety of stuff for sale. I got some coin in my pocket. He looks over the coins you hold up. Well, I'm not going to ask where you got those. But for that much, you could get one of our food items, some rope, a seashell necklace, or a fishing pole. Do you have anything more behind the counter? He said, well, if you had more coins or if you pulled your money together, you'd be able to afford a wooden shield, a sturdy club, or a lucky pearl. What do you think, Mikey? I got a mallet. Well, I think you need a weapon. Well, I've got a weapon. I've got my butterfly net. What What can the lucky pearl do? Can it bring back my dead dog? Or bring back one of us, who, whoever wears it? He holds up. This pearl, it seems to glow a bit. It helps protect you if someone tries to cast magic on you. Yeah, we, we definitely need that. I so think he holds up the shield. Be. Alternatively, the shield increases your armor rating. You definitely need armor. You don't got no weapons. It's that measly old net. Yeah, but it will, if it wasn't for that measly old net, you would have never killed that last mermaid. He then looks, at, he looks you over. Wait, wait. How did your dog die? He was drowned by mermaids. Yeah. What were you doing in the water? Killing mermaids. He said, oh... You're those mercenaries the fairies were talking about. I guess you'll be out to stop Melody next, because otherwise the mermaids are just going to come back. That's the plan. Who's this Melody? <sighs> he sighs. Well, she used to be a lot like you, but Yield has a way of changing people who come here. At least oh. I'm guessing you're not from around here. No. You, you can say that. I figured as much when one of the fairies tried to sell me some of those pills you gave him. The moment I saw those, I knew you weren't from around here. Wait, so they tried selling you the pills that they stole from me? Stole? You gave him? I gave him two. He took the bottle. He looks you over and says, Don't you think you're a bit young to be going around with Viagra? <laughs> Wait, so my dad takes Viagra? They were just magic pills. The shopkeeper snickers. <laughs> yeah, they're magic pills, all right. Magic boner pills. 
<laughs> what are you laughing at, Mikey? <laughs> he said boner. <laughs> but I ask again, seriously, kid, what were you doing with them? I found them. Where so exactly I... do you just find them? I think he found them in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was in this abandoned house we were just looking at. Oh. I got some other things from that house, if, if you're interested. He looks at you sideways. This abandoned house you spoke of, did you find the door in the attic? Yes. Yeah. He said, so you've been to Melody's house, I see. Melody's house? Well, you, you said Melody was the mermaid. I also said she used to be a lot like you, but Yeld has a way of changing people. How long has she been here? He said, well, time travels differently here, but I'd say she's been here for about... <sighs> he pulls out an abacus and begins sliding beads back and forth. Yeah, I'd say she was here for about 70 years. You think she might be that kid that disappeared? Maybe, but she's not 70 years old. But he... Shopkeep just said that time is different here. He sighed, so are her parents happen. still doing okay? She always seemed worried about them, but she couldn't go back. Why couldn't she go back? Does that mean we won't be able to go back? You can't go back when you change. Well. He adds, we don't worry, you've got years before that probably happens. He said, you know, you didn't answer my question. Are her parents still doing okay? I understand her father used to love woodworking. The basement was full, filled with sawdust all the time. He made a gazebo in their backyard and everything. How do you know that? Because I met Melody before Sorry. she died. Before she died? Before she died? Let's just say sometimes things that die don't stay dead in this world. That means Dave can come back. Maybe he'll come back as a dragon. That would be so awesome. You think my mom and dad would let me keep a dragon? Yes. He looks at your um. He said, "You say your uh, Dave was your dog. You mentioned, yeah. Now he's gonna come back as a dog. Yo doesn't work that way. Her parents may have moved to Florida. The house was abandoned. We, you know, being kids, wanted to snoop around. Um." Cop showed up, we hid in the attic, and boom, here we are. He said, so the cops showed up because you were stealing boner pills from their house? We were exploring. Uh, we are explorers. He said, that still yeah. sounds a lot like trying to truss up saying you're thieves. Okay, you if want. it's abandoned and it's just collecting dust, is that not recovering relics? I think not. You're he honest. says, how long ago did they move? From your viewpoint. Uh, I don't know, a couple years. years. Okay, maybe a couple weeks. He glares at you. Yeah, a couple weeks. Look, anyways, I do wish you the best in hopefully putting Melody out of her misery. It's only when she goes down that the other mermaids are going to stay down. Now, are you buying something or not? I have one question. The man with the elf ears and the glasses looks over at you, yes? We put that necklace on Melody. Would she turn back? No. I have something you may be interested in for, say, sell or even barter. It is a vintage edition of one of the greatest magazines from our area. And I pull out and I show them this 1970s June edition of Playboy. You are a sick little boy. <laughs> Not only are you a thief, you have issues. Yeah, I'm willing to part ways with it for a price. I was going to give it to my dad as a gift because he has a collection of these. So tell you what, kid, give me all of your smut paraphernalia so I can burn it, <laughs> and I'll give you a lot of coins as compensation done he puts a stack of coins twice as big of the one as uh, uh, twice as big as the ones you already have on the counter and takes the magazine from you i want to see you lifting porn from people again you hear 
you suddenly realize that this lot of coins is too much for you to carry. You'd have to split it between you and Millie just to pick it up. I'll pick up half, you pick up half. Okay. You now both have a lot of coins. At this point, the shopkeeper takes a nice long drink of his coffee and starts pouring himself another cup from his pot. He then gestures over to something in the back of the shop. By the way, now that you have a ton of coins between the two of you, you might be interested in this sword. Sword? Sword. He gestures over to a somewhat rusty sword that's on the wall behind him. This sword will increase pretty much er all of your physical attributes. Because I think the sword will be more beneficial in your hands than it will mine. I would like to, we would like to buy the sword, please. All right, I'm moving the mallet over to Mikey's inventory. You now both have no money. Millie, the sword gives you strong plus one, which you had with the mallet already. It gives you another charge plus one, which means you get to move even further during the opening wave of combat. And that can also be added to your strong if you hit them in the first wave of combat. Nice. Nice. You definitely, if you're holding the, the rusty sword, you definitely want to make sure you get that first strike advantage in the first round. I think we're done here, Mikey. I don't think so. He looks over the both of you. He notices you have a fishing rod. He said, were you planning to fish after you cleaned up the place? Mike? Well, we do need food. Mm -hmm. I am getting pretty hungry. And you do have a few scrapes and bruises that we need to tend to. Well, what would you trade for the fishing pole? I'm not giving you anything for the fishing pole. What about a vintage Atari gaming console? He said, do I look like the goblins? I don't have any place to use stuff like that. Besides, anyways, if you're going to go fishing, you better do it soon. The inn eventually locks up for the night, and if you're not there, they're not going to let you in. We better go to bed. Yeah, we better go to the inn then. Okay, well, well maybe we try fishing to get, get some food. Millie is allowed to try fishing once per adventure. So, Millie, are you going to the inn or are you going to try to fish before it gets later? We're going to try to fish before it gets too late. All right, you can roll your brave value plus the fishing rod. You can't add the brave from the sword. The sword doesn't help you fish. Okay. Roll 3d6. This will tell you how many fish you caught. Okay, I'll do that right now. 1d6, three times in a row. You rolled a four. You pulled out a rude fish. This rude looking fish, when consumed, immediately gives you plus one excuse me. It's best to use just before you try to interrupt someone in battle. On your next catch, you pulled out a swordfish. It can be used as a strong plus one, brave plus one sword once in battle before breaking. And then you pulled out another rude fish. You can divide these amongst yourselves as you see fit. Which one would you like, Mikey? Well, I'm thinking because you have a brave three, the swordfish would be good for me. Do the fish um, help heal you? No. Then I'll take a root fish and you take the other two, just in okay. case we revive Dave. And I don't know about you, Mikey, but I'm getting tired. Yeah, we need to hopefully find some way to get into that inn to rest up you go over to the inn you see a variety of what you might call monsters vampires mummies werewolves something that looks like frankenstein all sitting around and eating pie and drinking coffee Shit. we're gonna die we should have just camped out in the woods we're gonna die the mummy looks over you like you're laying a draft in. Close the door. What, were you raising a barn? The mummy's got jokes. This guy's hilarious. 
We close the door immediately. Let me go, sheesh. Kids these days and go back to his pie. And we walk up to the counter. Over there, you see a heavy set looking elf, also wearing glasses, who glares at you. I bet you want to order a big meal at the last fucking second just as I'm trying to close down the kitchen. Uh, actually, we're, we're hoping to get a room. Somewhere to sleep, put our little tiny heads. So are you those mercenaries the fairies kept going on about? Yes. Man. And I guess I'll let you stay here for the night. Business might actually pick up beyond this regular lot of losers. At one, at this point, the Wolfman shouts, I heard that! He said, yes, you're all losers. You heard me. Clear your tabs out for once. He looks back at you. Anyways, if the tourists come back, we might get some real business beyond this regular law of losers. Oh. He slams a single key on the counter. You can share one bed. Looks like you're sleeping on the floor, Mikey. What if it gets cold? We need to keep each other warm. Nope. So we head to the room. You find a somewhat dusty room with a tattered looking rug on the floor and a bed. You're not sure whether or not this bed has bed bugs. You think it might. You can have the bed. Perhaps with the business being slow, they haven't bothered to clean lately. Millie pulls the, the sheet, the bed uh, sheets back from. You get an explosion of dust bunnies. And by that, I mean dust, not d bunnies made of dust. <coughs> although, well, you know, although from what you've seen here, you wouldn't be surprised if you did find a bunny made of dust. At least we're not stuck outside with all those monsters. Up front from the front of the inn, you can hear her shouting, anyone not paying for a room can get out now. We're locking up. I guess it's too late to ask for a better room. At this point, you can hear her screaming, one. you, out, 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 out. And you can hear someone screaming, ow, 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 okay, okay, okay. Well, at least we're indoors. I mean, that's something, right? True. You are the smart one. Climbs you into notice the bed. suddenly on a shelf on one of the walls is a porcelain doll that looks much like the one you found at the house, except it's been taken... It's had good care taken of it, and it isn't in decrepit state. Hey, Mikey, did you see that doll? Yeah, I was that... just going to say, that looks real familiar. So I go up and I grab the doll to inspect it. Next to the doll, you find a photo frame and a picture. It looks exactly like the girl from the articles who disappeared. Wait a second, you think this was Melody's? We should take it. You want to steal it again? No, it's it's to help you Melody. See? Maybe it'll help her remember who she is. Did you see that lady, that, that elf out there? I don't know. I don't think we have a chance with that one. You do Just... have the feeling she knows rolling pin foo, as in she knows how to put a rolling pin upside your head. I think you should put it back. Just this one time, you should listen to me, even though I'm always right. So are you going? So you're both going to sleep for the night now? Yeah. Millie, you wake up early. You wake up early the next morning with the sun shining, and you have the distinct sensation that you're being kissed repeatedly all over. It wasn't me. These are the wettest kisses ever. I wake up. Millie, you wake up to realize you're next to Dave, who now has one tough back. And by the way, Millie, you're now back at two tough. Dave the dog is working your face all over. Dave, get down. But why? Dave, you're Dave, it's me you, too you're much. back. I miss you so much, Dave. Yeah, My parents were going to kill me if you died, for real. I've, I've seen what you've licked. You don't lick me. Great to be back, guys. Did you miss me? We did. It was. We thought we was... were gone forever. I thought I was too. What did it feel like? It felt like pain at first, but then just nothing. Yeah, I've been watching you guys. Like, how close? 
like I was right there with you. You want to use the mel- the the magic net? I'd love to. That way we all have weapons. Like Dave is now holding the net in his mouth. It's a bit awkward, but dogs don't have hands. Then again, Dave's used to carrying all kinds of crap around in his mouth, sometimes literally. I'll, I'll catch up with you guys in a second. I gotta, I gotta check my back for something. You're that damn doll. I just know. <laughs> okay, Mikey, you better not steal that damn doll. We exit outside. So they leave the room. And I take the family picture. Okay, you steal the photograph. Mm -hmm. You look behind yourself to see the giant elf lady looming over you. I'm, I'm looking at this picture, right? And we were told yesterday that we had to go find this little girl that's in this photo. Maybe you've heard of her. Her name's Melody. She died. She came back with uh, mermaid, or like she controls the mermaid. The innkeeper, the innkeeper size. Yes, she used to run this place before she died. How did she die? The innkeeper looks off to the side and mutters something about Dragul, but she doesn't really give you an answer. What did Lord Dragul do to her? She says nothing directly, but she didn't have the money for the taxes. This place has always been a bit of a money pit. So he seems to be the root of all the problems <laughs> in this home. I mean, that's what the fairies You're say. Like, kids, I wouldn't go, kid. I wouldn't go around saying that if you don't want to end up at the bottom of a pond with cement shoes. Well, I was wondering if I could have this photo, since we do have to try and find Melody. You know, we were told that she has to die, but. Put you know, the photograph back. She's behind the waterfall. And where is the waterfall exactly? I mean, we are new to this area. Keep rounding the pond and you'll find it. You can't miss it. So I put the photograph back. Besides, I, I really it. hope you can put her down. She's been in agony ever since. Well, every little bit of help, whether it be a picture or a doll, I know in her home, back in well, where we're from, there was a doll exactly like this, but broken, real old and tattered. And I'm thinking to be able to put her down, we're going to need to distract her with something that may bring back memories for her. And maybe a photo and a doll, just like the one that she had back home, might give us that bit of an advantage. But I'm just a kid. What do I know? She said, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not giving them to you. They're not really mine to give to you. Maybe you'll worth. understand later. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Thank you. And I walk out the road. She then goes over and begins dusting off the photograph and the doll. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stop at this point. We will continue more. Uh, next time, what will happen next? Dave the dog is back, guys. Come on. Dave the dog. So, as like we've done with the last ones, uh, favorite points. We'll start with uh, Clovis. What's your favorite point so far? Mikey's turning to a regular kleptomaniac. Yeah. <laughs> and he's and he's always trying to like get out of his shenanigans. It cracks me up. I, I laughed a few times. Um, Grizzly, what's your favorite part? Mr. Mikey the kleptomaniac. I'm really enjoying my bartering skills. I think they're getting better. Okay. Uh, Dave the dog? I like that now I'm back, but I also have a net in my mouth. Yeah, that, that is a hilarious mental picture. I'm not going to lie. Monster, your favorite part. You 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 know, for this being like your second D&D style game, you're doing well, man. Yeah. Well... Uh, I like the picture he painted with all the with the the descriptions. Yeah, the description, or the description of like how the people inside or the monsters inside. The, uh, it's all right. Yeah, there's a bunch of mon- there's a bunch of monster people in the inn, but they're not yeah, monsters. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're drinking coffee and not like you know beer. Or they're doing normal stuff. Or yeah. blood. Or I say I think it was hilarious that. Uh, 
that uh, it, it reminded me of a coffee shop, like not a coffee shop, but like a barber shop from like an Eddie Murphy movie. When he's like, "These yeah. guys are bums. They don't ever pay for shit." I thought it was fucking hilarious. I thought that was very yeah. funny. So that yeah, guys, I think we're gonna go ahead and end this. We'll see you next time on the yield, then the yield part four, and we'll see where we go from here. They gotta obviously go take out Melody, and we'll see how that goes. Will Dave die again? Will anyone else die? We'll see. So then, guys, we want you to stay nerdy. Basics. Always. Always.